Okay, so in this video, we're going to use Paint 3D to create a hairdresser's scissors or shears, depending on which term you wish to use. We're using Paint 3D, which is a free-to-use 3D modeler that comes with Windows 10. I'm going to click on New, and the bulk of what we're going to be doing will be using the 3D Shapes menu. We're going to click on 3D Doodle, and we're going to use the Sharp Edge tool. So click and then let go, that creates your first dot. And if you're looking for a straight line, you don't keep clicking, you're just gonna make the endpoints. So these should be like a wedge. So we'll do click there and click there. And then we need like the thin arm to come up. And then we wanna kind of fake a curve because um, there are rings at the end of the scissors, of course. So then click a couple of times to kind of make a fake curve where it attaches to the ring. And we'll widen this out a little bit here and then click there. Now what you can do, you can click on edit color if you wish to change the color of this and you can click on silver or, or gray rather. And they do have polished metal, dull metal. If you're exporting this into a program such as Unity, this seems to get lost. So hopefully they will fix that in an updated version. But uh, you can still use this with those applications such as Unity. You can just apply the materials and the surfaces when you're in that application itself. Now what we're going to do we're going to go over to text. And the reason why we're in text is because currently, despite the fact that there are some 3D models built in, 3D objects built in, they don't have a round frame. In 3D objects, there is the cylinder, which you could flatten out, but the center is really kind of small. So if you want like just like a thin frame, you kind of have to fake it. So we click on text, we click on 3D text, and we're gonna go up to, I believe it's the third from the top. So we're gonna click on this one. And the reason for this is because the letter O effectively is a round frame. And it will actually not look like a letter o, o because we took this, we've selected this font. So go ahead and just draw that. Letter O does not matter if it's lowercase or uppercase. In this font, it's the same. And now if you click on 3D view, you'll see that it is indeed a round frame. So no one is even gonna know that you use the letter O. And the reason why I chose that particular font is because it looks just like a ring. So let's slide that over. So that's just a left click and slide over. Clearly it's too small, so grab one of the corners to scale that out. Now we're gonna click on 3D view, and I'm going to right click and hold, which lets you orbit. And now we need to push these things against the canvas so we can line them up. So just left click, push, and you can shrink it to So the only problem with these scissors, the tip won't be thinner like you really should have. But again, you could just have these scissors sitting on like a countertop or something or in an inventory. So you don't have to worry about that kind of detail. Also, if you make these relatively thin, no one's going to notice anyways. Hold the scroll wheel down and then move the mouse to pan like that. Left click on this, move this. Right click to orbit, hold the mouse wheel down and move the mouse. Okay, getting close. Let's go ahead, edit color, choose gray. Again, right click to orbit. Let's push that in. And that ring is probably a little too wide. Again, you might want it stylized to make them bigger really no right or wrong 
And we can see that is protruding a little bit. There we go. And you almost done already, actually, because the two scissors are going to be very similar, the two blades. So just left click, drag to select everything, copy, paste. You see the little pulse so you know it pasted. And you can use this tool just to rotate it, and it's going to snap into place at 90 degrees. And you can leave this at whatever angle you want. You Maybe you want to rotate this one so they're close to, to being closed. Now, there should be like a screw or a pivot of some kind in the middle here. So you can either use, again, in the 3D shapes, you could use the hemisphere. Or you can put an orb that just goes through it. Uh, let's just use the sphere. Put it right about there. Make it a little bit smaller. It really should be a screw, but I'm not too worried about that kind of minutia. Again, the purpose of this series is really to help make um, placeholder graphics and more stylized graphics as opposed to photorealistic, accurate graphics. Okay, let's 3D view. Oops, I'm sorry, 3D view. Let's right click and drag so you can see that's way forward. So we need to push that in. It's too high. Push that down. So you got to be careful when you're lining things up. Make sure that it's properly on. This is what's known as the Z axis, the depth field. Oops. Sorry, I accidentally grabbed the zoom. And flatten that out a little bit. There, now it will show on both sides. So, not perfect. This here is a little bit bulky. I probably should have made this angle a little bit sharper. And that's one of the limitations to Paint 3D, is you can't move those individual points like in other 3D modelers. But again, this is pretty solid, and it took, what, 15 minutes? Uh, we're also going to put the little hook here for the thumb. Um, so, let's... Go back to 3D objects, go back to our sharp doodle, our sharp edge doodle, and just click, 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 click. So kind of just making a curve, make it a little bit wider. There we go. Again, edit color, make it gray. Right click to orbit. Grab one of the points to shrink it. Here it gets a little bit harder to see. Is there other things above it? But here, this angle is good for getting the width right. I think that's about right, and you can do a full rotation around. Not quite centered. I suppose you could push it a little bit, but it also snaps the grid, so sometimes you're not going to be able to get it exactly right. But there we go. So a perfectly serviceable model that you can use again, either as placeholder graphics or as um, you know, again, if you're doing more stylized visuals. This is probably a little bit too wide, but that's okay. You could always just redesign that. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's delete that. So again, you're just clicking where you're changing the angle. We'll make this thinner, except for the base. There, that's better. And again, that's a weakness. You can't go in and change points. You can't change vertices like you can on most 3D modelers. You basically have to redo that piece. 
I'm still holding out hope that they will eventually, they being Microsoft, will add a taper tool. I think that would be nice. Let's see how that looks from all angles. Is that too far forward? I let's see. It's hard to tell because since the canvas is on, it's blocking it out. I believe that's about right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and from that angle, you can see it does join nicely. So that's better. So just like that, I was able to fix, or should I say replace, that loop. So let's go ahead and export file, 3D FBX, and we're going to call this Shears 0408. Save and we'll also save the project. Save as Paint 3D Shears 0408. We will go to our Unity application where we've been putting these 3D models. And again, this is just to show you how easy it is to import. We'll go to 3D objects. There's Shears 0408. I have this set up so the uh, it's sorted by newest. Just drag and drop it in there. And there they are. And as I've mentioned before, the scale factor is totally wrong for um, Unity. So what you're going to want to do is increase that scale factor depending on the size of everything else. There we go. Obviously, uh, scissors should not be as big as a pine tree, but just want you to be able to see it. There you go. All right, so that should do it for this lesson. Uh, as I demonstrated in the other lesson, you could apply materials right in Unity. Uh, so even though this is a demo for, um, I was showing Paint 3D, if you're using Unity, uh, I already previously created this material. It's just right click and then create and then material. And I just gave it like a, a metal metallic color and just apply it and then you could do like a darker one for the screw in the middle okay so there we go